conceive of my exhibition now and then. 15 years of contemporary printmaking at the Galveston Art Center in Galveston, Texas. And we are ready for the artist talks in about 30 minutes. Thanksgiving uh, weekend, I can start with, without thanking you 
people. First of all, the board members of dance from outside the room were uh, very enthusiastic about this exhibition and just wrapped it in two weeks uh, in between venues. So thank you so much for unanimous uh, support for this exhibition. Uh, also, I want to thank uh, Vincent who went through hundreds of works to select few who represent the past 15 years. To Anya Tish, my gallerist in Houston, who picked me up when I was still at La Salle after seeing just the prints from the first semester. <laughs> and Mark also, who believed in me <laughs> ever since. And my husband who supported me all through the years. Uh, to Brian and Lexis and Nick who run the show so with me. So uh, I guess to talk about 15 years is um, take 15 years because I was busy every day. But I will start with what came first because chronologically there is an evolution of the work uh, on two levels. One is uh, process and material and the other evolution is in the concept. So we talk about the early work. The early work is the seven prints behind you, and these are from 2000 and 2001. I started print making in 1999. The subject matter of the tree trunk began in 97, and the first drawing is by my title, of the show back on the other side. It's only drawing in the exhibition. The rest of the work is uh, all uh, print making. These are uh, surfaces that have gone through the press <coughs> and uh, got the image printed uh, individually and uniquely. So in the beginning, I was, uh, of course, uh, in class and I was printing on paper. And that wasn't enough for me. I wanted to, I was working as a sculptor more than a painter as I was making the prints. So that led me to the desire of achieving dimension and movement in the work. But it didn't happen overnight. It happened through the years as I was experimenting with the material, which I love to experiment with different surfaces. So after working on the paper, I started to print on fabric. And uh, this one, for example, right here, has uh, two, three layers of fabrics. Each one is printed and then they are stitched and they are one above the other. So when you look closely, you can see the depth that is created by the fabrics that are uh, one above the other. When that wasn't enough for me, I decided to look for other materials and uh, thought, well, I need a material that is transparent so I can see what the second layer looks like and not hide it. So I started printing on plexiglass. <coughs> the first pieces are in the other room. Uh, I don't know if we can all move there. Sure, yeah. Yeah? yeah. But then we'll have to come back here. <laughs> because the, the exhibition is hung. Uh, not uh, chronologically, so we have to work <laughs> in chronological order, goes from one room to the other. But okay, I'll skip that for right now. <coughs> so the first pieces were two plexiglasses, we are printed on both of them, and then uh, when they are um, put together one above the other, you can clearly see what's on the other layer. And that was hung on the wall, that's that yellow piece over there. When that wasn't enough, I said, well, what if I add more layers? So that became a challenge going on the wall, and that's when the piece became a sculpture, which is what we see right here. I added the layers, um, and theoretically, I can grow as many layers as I want. So it became a sculpture. And then when the small one was not enough, I moved on to create a bigger one, where you really need to walk around to see everything around. So, as I mentioned in the beginning, the process led me to experimentation on different material, and that led me to create 3D model prints. Conceptually, it started with the tree trunk, it's still about the tree trunk, but as I moved forward, I focused more on the interior 
uh, geometry of the organic is seen under the microscope. And that's why everything is more pixelated and imagery that is uh, tiny under the microscope, but I blow it up so it's more visual without the tools of microscopic uh, 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 instruments to be used. Um, Well, once I worked on the, the plexiglass, the, I started to print on both of them. When I created the lines, it created movement, and that was something that I was after. After creating 3D, I said, what comes next, the movement came next. Basically, if I narrow down my imagery, it's a, either the concentric rings is seen when you cut the tree trunk uh, horizontally, but if you cut the trunk uh, vertically, you see another linear pattern. So the whole work is about the play between those vertical and horizontal imagery, either as seen visually or as you see them under the microscope. So when I lay up the lines, I start to create the movement, <coughs> and that was what I was after. So I created it by doing it on place. heavy and there's all kinds of uh, process problems and weight issues and clarity you know the ideas and stuff so I moved to the floor from the pedestal to the floor and work on flexi sheets, flexi sheets that are much lighter than the flexi, they are much thinner so uh, the weight is much less than uh, the flexi glass pieces. Uh, at some point, when I achieved uh, these sculptures, I decided to to create shapes with the plexiglass. At that point, I had to go and commission the factory to create the domes you see, and then this in the other room. So that's another step where I print, and then I have another process to create shapes to create another. Uh, one more surface that I didn't talk about is the, the boards because usually you print on paper so after I printed on fabric I started before I printed on plexiglass I printed on the uh, boards and once I achieved the look that I was after and the idea came together I was able to move to the plexiglass so for the past 15 years it seems like a lot but in a way it's not a lot but it was slow and, and gradual, so uh, that's, that's how things came about. So since you have a, a solo show in February, yes. could you give us just a little bit info of what direction you're going to go? Because I have no idea what you're going to do. That's a good question, and actually I was talking to my friend on the way here. So because I get ideas constantly when I work. So I started with these prints. And as I work on these prints, I come to a fork. And I have to decide where do I go. So I go in one direction. But I know that if I went in this direction, I probably would have gone to a different place. And so I took the left, OK, and I kept going. And a few months later, or two days later, I got to another fork. And, and for the past 15 years, I had a lot of forks. <laughs> and while I was looking for the work for this exhibition, I was digging out the drawers, and it was hundreds of works. And I saw this series behind us, and I said, I like this, and I still didn't do everything I want to do in this direction. So I'm actually back to the first fork. 15 years ago, which feels strange in a way. Some days it feels really strange. So I'm on the first fork, 
and I have some surprises for you when you come to my studio to see where that fork led me to. Uh, but I'm still on the last fork. So I'm heading in two directions, the first fork and the last fork. So it's two bodies of work, but for February, I'm going to be the first fork. <laughs> I'm looking forward and I'm sure that the forks are going to be fabulous. <laughs> yes. So you mean to say that all this has been a big circle? No, it's not a circle. No, you it's said it's not, not you, you, you can you, you come, sort of come back, come back, back to the beginning in a certain way. I so don't think so because what I'm doing right now, I, I see it as a linear. Uh, yeah, I don't see it as a circle because if it's a fork, and you know, if I continue this, I. I that leads me to another fork, and whatever comes next will lead me to another fork. So it's a development in a, in a different direction. So I don't I don't see it as a circle. <laughs> the subject matter is a circle. <laughs> it's more like a spiral. <laughs> Maybe like this. Right. Yes. Right. Where did well, well, the of paper pieces? Yeah. The four pieces. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of four pieces. Okay. You want to move to the other one? Yeah. Yes. The first pieces that I printed on plexiglass, it's this, these are the pieces. Only two layers, and when I wanted to add more layers, it became a, a challenge. So it went down to the pedestal and then to the floor. So uh, you asked me about this installation on the floor. This is printed on plastic, it's not paper. But uh, I think... This is about uh, two years old, maybe. I made it about two years ago. And uh, the way it came about is, for years, I have uh, projects that I'm doing. These projects are outside my main uh, line or whatever kind of my interest. So for years I've been collecting cards from uh, art openings that the galleries don't need. After the opening they have hundreds and thousands sometimes. They don't need them so I collected them. And uh, I have tens of thousands of them. Of them. And I, from time to time when I had free time I would stitch them and create shapes. And uh, two years ago I had an exhibition at Box 13 the two door was on the door, and they selected me to exhibit uh, the installation there. And that uh, gallery is huge, it's like this gallery almost. And the floor was filled up almost to capacity with the stitched uh, cards. And it was like uh, on the outside, you can think maybe that's a garden, but it also looked like a cross cut of the plant with all the. Uh, pipes and all kinds of uh, structure is seen under the microscope. So it operated on two levels. So when I did that installation, it was out of paper and I had some interest. I, I had some, uh, you know, that was something that I liked. And a lot of people asked me, you know, why is it uh, on the wall? Why this and why that? But that was that. But when I started printing on plexiglass, on uh, plastics, and I, I created this, I was inspired by the other installation. It was on the floor, and it was organic, and it's modular. I can change the shape. <laughs> I can change the shape to uh, to fit the uh, site-specific uh, galleries. You know, so it, it looks like this here in my studio. It was on the wall. Two years ago it was a 44 level on the floor in a different shape. So I like the versatility of the work. It's like this. And yeah, these are all printed by me. And everything was printed. Yes. Okay. Um, going way, way, way back to your first inspiration of the the tree yes. uh, cross-sectional. Was there a moment when you really saw this in reality, in nature, or from a, a botany textbook, or, you know, what, you know, yeah, first time you saw, or 
all the beautiful patterns and all that. When yeah. was that, or how did that? Well, okay. Yeah, I, I, I remember that very clearly. I looked in a magazine, and there was a page, one page that had a picture of the trunk of this tree trunk sliced with the tree rings, and I looked at that and I said, oh, that's it. You know, it's like I found something. I, I still remember that. I think I still have that page somewhere. But uh, it was. But the love of nature is from as early as age six or seven. I remember clearly that as a very young child, I was very observant. I was very aware of my surrounding and really examining, examining uh, the flowers and, and the spring. You know, and I was really an observant child. And in high school, I uh, majored in biology. I absolutely loved it. And in, uh, as Diane mentioned, I studied chemistry in college. So I love the inner structure of nature, both on the outside and the inside. So that's definitely the inspiration for my work. Challenges are present when you're trying to print. Is it oil-based inks on like polycarbonate and yeah. plexiglass and some of these plastic materials? Is there is there some um, sort of technical challenge that you have to overcome, or is it similar to printing on paper? Yeah, no, not at all. Um, the first prints I did with the rubber-based ink, which is similar to oil, but a uh, when I started printing on different material, it created uh, issues. I mean, every material has a different problem. Plexiglass breaks mm -hmm. under the pressure of the press. I have a press that uh, has 600 pounds roller that goes over the material. So obviously I cannot put material that will break, or if I put something that will break, like plexiglass, I have to adjust my ways of printing. Uh, I don't know if it's good or not, but nobody taught me that. I had to experiment with everything, and obviously as you experiment, you have a lot of failure. But I was so determined to achieve my goal, so I went through the failures, and, and slowly, by slowly, like a scientist in the lab, <laughs> there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and, and when that comes, it's really a, a great moment. So yes, I had to adjust my uh, pressure, of course. I had to adjust the <coughs> plates that would work with plexiglass because you can't put hard, hard on hard. You know, it to be soft on hard to not break either one of them. So I had to invent ways to print. And uh, as I said, lots of failure and experimentation. And, and just one last uh, question or comment. For those people here that might not understand what a monoprint is compared to a regular, mm -hmm. regular printing print. process where you're doing additions, uh, how do you, uh, how do, you, how do your pieces fit the definition of a monoprint? And maybe a little explanation for those who don't understand. That. Okay, so in, in printmaking, you usually create a plate, usually out of metal or wood, like your wood block and you create the image on the metal or on the wood and when you ink that surface and place the paper over it and press it you get the image get the image gets transferred to the paper this way when you ink again to the paper press you get the same image again and again you can create addition of hundreds of uh, prints that are identical and usually uh, artists make prints to create additions so they can sell numerous of the same work. But for me, that is not what I want. I'm after one of a kind, because I'm doing the labor in the studio, so if I have to print 50, that's not, it's like a, I can hire somebody to do it. It's no fun in the labor. For me, when I do a print, I want to leave it suspense all through the process, and every time I pull the blanket from the press, I want to be surprised or not, but I want the suspense that's something that's very important for me. So that's why I work with a mono print. So a mono print is one unique print. And the 
plate is made out of plexiglass in most cases. And there is nothing that's incised on the plexiglass to create an image. So the image is done by manipulate, manipulating the ink over the plexiglass and then placing the paper and pressing. So when you remove it, the image gets transferred to the paper, but there's nothing on the plexi. So I have to re-ink and recreate an image. So everything is absolutely one of a kind. So how are you making the marks for the, show us an example of that, and how are you making the marks on the plexiglass that then gets transferred to the, I mean, on the ah, plate, the plexiglass, the plate, and then okay, so, to Okay, so, okay, uh, so when I ink a plate, for example, just imagine there is ink on the plate. So there are ways to manipulate the ink. How do you manipulate the ink? You can go with a brush or with a finger, cutie, whatever, and remove some ink from the plate or add some more and, and, and walk basically like a painter on the plexiglass and then when the image is what you want you press it with the paper over. And, but as I mentioned before I work like a sculptor so I like to create templates out of material so because the plexi is hard I need to find soft material otherwise it won't break. So a soft material would be a fabric, would be uh, I use a lot of fabrics to create patterns. And uh, paper, I make plates out of paper. So when you create the shape, you know, let's say a uh, coffee filter, whatever, I, I cut and I glue. I physically have a 3D thin uh, plate that I can ink and touch the plates and create the image. So that, that's, that's how I work. Any other questions? Yes. Do you ever work with series, only monoprints? Do you ever do series? Uh, the only time I did addition was when I was at U of H. I took a set spring class and I did uh, maybe one or two additions. <laughs> Anytime soon because I still have to pursue all my forks. <laughs>